Welcome to The Bite, your source for entertainment news both around the country and right here in the Gator Nation. I'm Andrea Newport-Jones. I'm Danielle Friends. And I'm Lauren Crawford. We're here to bring you all the entertainment news coverage you could want, from the biggest celebrities and fashion statements to local coverage from right here in Gainesville, Florida. Well, ladies, this is our all-girls show, and I oh, have to say, so I've been waiting for it. I, I mean, I love it's Kelvin here. and I love Bobby. No, but girl it's time power. To get rid of yeah, them. this is perfect. We get to talk about fun things. Yeah, I know. Finally, finally. I mean, we're not talking about hotties with bodies today, no. so I'm missing that. that that's a surprise, though. We'll I, have it. We'll have that it's before okay. the end of the year. Well, we'll get your fix. <laughs> well, our very own Carla Byron headed out to SwampCon to see what she could give us for this week's Power Up. Check it out. Hey guys, I'm here at Swamp Con. I'm cosplaying as myself, but there are a lot of cosplayers here today who are ready to see all of the festivities that this convention right here in Gainesville has to offer, so let's check them out. Gaming, sci-fi, anime, comics. So many fandoms were on display at the annual multi-genre convention, Swamp Con. It's just a place for people to you know, come in costume, uh, run panels, and talk about the things they love, and basically um, see other people who share their interests. Cosplaying is the hobby of dressing up and performing as a character. Making costumes and accessories requires time and a lot of creativity. Uh, I am Gordon Freeman from the Half-Life game. And I'm Link from The Wind Waker. My costume was actually made by her. Um, she made the shield, the Wind Waker, pretty much everything. I, I didn't know how to sew. Uh, I just, I bought a sewing machine, I bought a cheap sewing machine, and I, I bought some fabric and I just like, I went for it. <laughs> It came out all right, I guess. I am a head crab zombie from the Half-Life series. Uh, I'm Gordon Freeman, the protagonist from the game. It's made of a wire mesh for the base, which has been like um, manipulated to um, make a more dome shape. And the legs are attached to it, and it's also made of a wire mesh. And then it's covered with paper mache. For cosplayer Michael Ryan, dressing up as his favorite character is fun. And so is seeing how fans react to his makeshift outfit. The most fun part is probably seeing uh, people's reactions when uh, they recognize you as their favorite character. I mean, you put a lot of effort and work into making your props and costume. And then when someone sees you and they go, oh my god, it's Gordon Freeman. You're like, yes, yes it is. Guest speakers were also in attendance, like University of Florida alum and YouTuber Hunter Hughes, a.k.a. Dookie Shed. I was actually watching a lot of gaming YouTubers, and I was just kind of like, I can do this. Like, I played a ton of video games. I love video games. Um, I know how to edit video. I, I learned in high school, and uh, I just, you know, I just decided to go for it. Since its launch, his video gaming channel has rocked up more than one quarter of a million subscribers. I grew up on video games. I had I had an Atari 2600 when I was really little. I, I had an NES, Super Nintendo. It's Video games basically raised me. There are not only cosplayers and guests here at SwampCon, but there's also a lot of local vendors selling their merchandise and creations. So between the local vendors and our sponsors who come here to advertise, um, there's a lot of people who just coming to Gainesville very specifically to attend our event and basically enjoy the town afterwards. In the future, Chan hopes to attract bigger named guests and businesses. But you know, I'd like to be able to work at, at you know expanding this convention so that when I'm gone, it's something I can come back here maybe like five to ten years later and say, oh hey, that's something I helped start. It may look like Halloween in February, but Swamp Con is a weekend full of fun and fantasy. I'm Carla Byron with Power Up. So there have been a lot of celebrity feuds going on lately, and they're taking their issues to Twitter, where we can all see them. So which ones have you guys noticed? For me, it's been the whole Drake, Tiger, <laughs> Tiger, Rar, Tiger, Tiger, <laughs> Tiger debacle, and it's been going around, going on for a while with like behind the scenes. They were label mates at once, supposed to be best friends. However, that's kind of gone away for the for a while. And recently, though, when Drake dropped his surprise album, which was amazing, by the way, yeah. just have to say that. In 6 p.m. in New York, he kind of shouted out Tyga for dating Kylie Jenner when he was like, you need to act more of your age, not your girl's age. And as we all know, Kylie and Tyga have been in the press for dating yeah. for a long time. And then after that, Tyga went to Twitter to say all these things to kind of respond to it. And he even brought in uh, information about a feud that 
Drake has with Chris Brown. So it was really petty. Yeah. yeah. And just Tyga's like straight up like, I am not dating Kylie Jenner. But it seems to be that the Kardashian clan is all over Twitter. And surprise, yeah. surprise, who's the other person They're in the Twitter feed? For <laughs> yeah, who's the other person in the Twitter feed right oh, now? Oh, Chloe Kardashian. And why? Because Kylie Jenner's relationship. Yeah. yeah. With She's like Tyga. the mama bear. Yeah, so everyone. Amber Rose actually came out on Twitter and was like does not approve of Kylie Jenner's like um, relationship with Tyga because she feels like Tyga shouldn't be dating her, whatever, whatever. And um, Chloe was like, well, you were a stripper when you were 15. <laughs> and yeah. It got really personal really Really quickly. quick, <laughs> and it was childish and to the point where Amber Rose and Khloe, Khloe Kardashian were calling each other whores and like it was a middle Amber school brought in level. Kim. Amber brought called Kim a whore, yeah. which was like, oh it was, gosh, my, it was dragging the whole her. Family. It was, it was literally much. like middle school level of like cattiness. Yeah, that they're just talking. There, it's so much negativity, and they're just like, what? What else do you have to do with your life? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, do something positive. Like. Don't go on Twitter bashing on constantly, constantly. The Kardashians yeah, are like, but the, the constant there. though is done by Iggy Azalea, which oh I'm yeah. sure you yeah. always have. Oh you love God. to follow. All so that. so Iggy <laughs> tweeted Papa John's, you know. Yes, this is so funny though. So she ordered a pizza. A delivery boy hands out her phone number to someone else. So Iggy gets all these text messages saying, "I'm your biggest fan. Please call me. Is this you? Just tell me. Is this you?" And so of course. Iggy goes to Twitter and says, Papa John's, you know, this is data breach. But she wasn't like, oh, data breach. She was like, Iggy versus Papa John's. Yeah, like, it's always like a thro pizza throwdown. Yeah, <laughs> it was just so funny. I was like, I'll fight Papa John's like for you. I and don't know. then they responded to her saying, you know, we're so sorry. Um, don't bounce us. So they were kind of like making a joke out of it. And she got back and she's like, you know, this isn't funny. But Iggy is known for doing this. Like, yeah, she does it. It keeps kind over of, it. It's almost a weekly thing. I, I'm a fan of her, but seeing it is very hard. It's been really hard to watch. However, what I have sided on with her when it comes to her voicing her opinions on Twitter was her recent voice when she spoke about being body shamed after her recent vacation with her boyfriend yeah, in Hawaii. It's like three days ago, right? She yeah. was shown with cellulite, which is totally normal, and she went on Twitter to voice how, you know, women do have cellulite. So what, However, she's like, quit Twitter now? She also, she not only Twitter, she quit all social, social medias media. and said that her management will be handling it, which I think is ultimately a good thing, but I just don't think that was how the way to leave. How long is it going to last, though? I, I mean, honestly, to be that big of a celebrity and just she's, quit? She's thrown stones for multiple reasons constantly. But so you know I think what? this is might be for and a while. And she'll probably be happier. You know what? Like honestly, when you're a celebrity and you're constantly in the public li like public eye, like you're a human being. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, you I'm like I know that it's hard to take negativity and I'm just like a college student, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she's on a daily basis, how much hate can you possibly take? Yeah. And social media is this a platform for people to hide behind and be mean. So I can only imagine what she goes through on a daily basis. She did say though that she would occasionally tweet or something or show a picture on Instagram, but you would mm -hmm. know it was her when she would put like dash IA after a yeah. post. Yeah. So I just think that she's had enough and it's I just better. feel bad. It's yeah. better for everyone. But moving on from this, this mm -hmm. heavy topic, we're gonna go talk about puppies Yay. with Sarah Gerard and our viral Aww. ball. Who doesn't love puppies? Thanks guys, I literally couldn't be in a cuter place at the moment. We're here at Butler Plaza at the PetSmart with Animal People Incorporated in honor of our topic this week, dogs of Instagram. Our first famous canine is Tuna, a Chawini with over 1.1 million followers and some unique features. Not your average small dog, Tuna has an exaggerated overbite, recessed jawline, and a gloriously wrinkly neck. How could you not love that face? Next is Sir Charles Barkley. This cute little guy is a French bulldog with, you guessed it, his own clothing line. He racks in over 300,000 followers on Instagram alone, not including his Facebook and Twitter. If you're looking for a more sophisticated dog to follow, there's also a menswear dog. This Shiba Inu calls himself the most stylish dog in the world, dresses up in all kinds of human men's attire, and is releasing his own style book. Finally, we have Marnie, a Shih Tzu rescued from the streets of New York City. Marnie is known best on Vine, where her owner films all of her tongue out, tilted head shenanigans. With over 1.5 million followers combined, she advocates for adopting older dogs and has met more celebrities than the average human. Some include Riff Raff, 
Tina Fey, Betty White, James Franco, Ed Sheeran, and Taylor Swift. Anyone else concerned that there are dogs that are already more successful than you? I am, just a little bit. Anyway, this has been the Viral Vault. That's all we have locked up this week. This has been Sarah Gerard. Back to you. Oh, those puppies were so, so cute. cute. So precious. Reminds me of my little Yoda at home. And yes, oh, her name Yoda. is Yoda. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> okay, well, stay tuned. We have so much more for you to come. And we really hope that you keep watching The Bite. Um, I'm on Jenny Newport Jones. I'm Lauren Crawford. And I'm Danielle Prince. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Yes. Thanks. You guys, what are you doing for spring break? Because I'm gonna go to my. Ready to wear is a term that I feel is loose, used loosely, like my word favorite, in the fashion industry. This is true.